Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be checking out the 2015 Subaru WRX. And I'm particularly excited about this because I personally drive a 2014 WRX STI, so I'll get a little comparison in here. This is a four-door sedan with seating for five. And this particular trim is the WRX Premium. Up front, daytime running lights, fog lights, and you can see a big scoop for the intercooler. MSRP as tested here comes to 29,639. To open the trunk, you've got a button on the key fob. Now it has a 12 cubic foot trunk. This is a pretty big difference compared to the previous hatchback model, which had 19 cubic feet without the seats folded down. This does, however, allow you to fold down the rear seats 60-40 split. Underneath the floor tire, you've got tools, a jack, and a spare. So let's take a look under the hood. Now they have put a fairly large engine cover in here, but it looks like it may be designed to help with airflow into the intercooler and it also is vented up front. Now it does require tools to remove, but a simple screwdriver will do and then you can pull this off. So checking for serviceability, actually things look pretty good. You've got your air filter here with some simple clips in order to get access to that. Your engine oil dipstick. You've got your engine oil filter. How convenient is that? Right up on top, engine oil fill, your coolant fill, radiator cap, uh, windshield washer fluid, battery access, pretty easy. It is up front, so you know you're putting weight towards the front and on the driver's side. Not necessarily ideal from a weight distribution point of view, but it is easy to access. And then you also have your fuse box here with clips to access and then your brake fluid reservoir. This new engine has all the latest tech, aluminum block and heads, four valves per cylinder, dual overhead cams with dual active valve control system. So you've got variable valve timing on both the intake and exhaust. This is a two liter engine with a compression ratio of 10.6 to one. It is turbocharged, it has a twin scroll turbocharger which is intercooled and peaks at around 15.9 psi of boost this engine produces 268 horsepower at 5600 rpm and 258 pound feet of torque at 2000 to 5200 rpm so let's follow the path of the intake air we've got our air coming in up the front and then passing through the filter it then travels downward to the inlet side of the turbocharger there you can see the turbocharger up front, which then passes the intake air through this pipe here to the intercooler. After passing through the intercooler, the air then travels through the throttle body, electronically controlled, and then into the intake manifold plastic, as you can see, splitting the air between the four cylinders. After passing through the engine, the air then travels through equal length headers back to the turbocharger and then exits through a single pipe towards the rear. That single pipe then splits between two mufflers, and then there are four tailpipes. Power is sent to all four wheels through a six-speed manual transmission. It's first sent through a viscous coupling, which can transfer the torque between the front and the rear. 17-inch wheels wrapped in 235 over 45 Dunlop tires. Up front, 12.4-inch ventilated disc brakes with dual piston calipers. This is matched to a McPherson strut-style suspension. Here you can see the steering linkage with the anti-roll bar just below it, linking to the lower control arm. Here you have your drive axle for the front and the lower control arm, which as you can see is aluminum, so good to see lowering the unsprung mass there with aluminum parts. In the rear, 11.3 inch solid disc brakes with single piston calipers, this matched with a double wishbone suspension. As you can see, the coil spring wrapped around the shock. This is becoming a bit more rare. It seems more companies are going to separate uh, coil and shock, and that due to saving some space in the trunk. Now here you can see the upper control arm. You've got the lower control arm coming in. Here you have the tow linkage. And here you can see the lower control arm, the anti-roll bar, of course, mounting to it. And this is also where the shock is mounted. So let's have a look at the interior. To unlock, simply use the key fob. Cloth seats with red stitching and mechanical adjustments. Okay, sitting in the interior, good snug seats, which I do like. They hold you in pretty well. Uh, and the cloth is actually pretty soft. I really do like these cloth seats. Plenty of leg room. Uh, that said, there is, you know, your knee does come pretty close to the steering column if you're on the taller end. Now on the right side, you've got a hard plastic, which is the contact. And then on the left side, the bolster does hold your leg in, so you won't really be hitting anything with your left leg. 
Now the steering wheel leather wrapped feels pretty good and plenty of controls on it. You've got your cruise control, your audio control, and then your phone controls. And you can also switch through a few things uh, up on the front display. You've got your tachometer on the left, speedometer on the right, uh, engine coolant and fuel level. Now you do have uh, electronic windows all around with auto on the drivers, uh, power locks, and you can adjust the mirrors with power control. You can adjust the brightness of the displays. You can pop the trunk over here and then you can also turn off stability control and then hold it to turn off traction control. Now you have a display up front which actually has a good bit of information in it. As you can see here, how much fuel till empty, uh, the average fuel economy that you've been getting, and then a live readout of what the instantaneous fuel economy you're getting. Uh, you've got, you know, a history of your fuel economy, uh, how the traction control systems and stability control systems are interfering with your drivetrain. You've got average mile per gallon uh, total for the car uh, for your trip, and then how much you are pressing the acceleration pedal down. You've got a boost gauge here. Now I mentioned peak boost being at about 16 PSI. This is actually reading 22.1, which was off of a launch. So I guess it can, you know, briefly exceed that 16 PSI and then it'll kind of control it and try and bring it back down. Fairly basic audio system you've got going on here. I do like the buttons for the climate control, you know, nice and large. Uh, they got a good feel to them. And then it also displays up front, whatever you have the settings for your climate control settings. Six speed manual, as I mentioned earlier, you've got a nice little storage compartment up here and a 12 volt outlet. You've got two cup holders, heated seats for both the front driver and passenger. And then you've got this uh, center console here. You've got USB, audio input, and another 12 volt outlet. As you can see, it does have a power moonroof. Now visibility is actually pretty good. The front windshield is a bit far away from the driver, so it makes the interior seem pretty big, but visibility out of it is good. To the sides is also very good. Checking the blind spot, plenty of vision back there, and looking behind you, you know, somewhat small rear window, but decent visibility, and you do have a backup camera when you do put it in reverse. So sitting in the rear, I've got the front driver's seat adjusted to where I will be sitting. And you know, there is a decent amount of leg room back here. I certainly think it's better than the previous generation. Um, that said, you know, my knees are pretty much touching. So leg room, you know, it works back here. You've got power windows, uh, and then you do have cup holders, which you can pop out right there. Sitting in the center, it does seem like if you had a smaller passenger, you could actually get this to work out. Okay, so let's take it for a test drive. Now the first thing I'll touch on is the manual transmission. Uh, shifting gears, it's pretty notchy. Uh, the throws are a decent length, but you know, it, it gives you a good satisfying feel that you've got it in gear, so I don't mind it, but it is on the notchier side. You know, it's a, it's a little bit of force that's required. The clutch pedal also, decent amount of force required to shift gears. Now on the clutch pedal, it has a pretty wide range of engagement, so it's not just this very short narrow band where it's like, oh, all of a sudden the clutch is engaged, which I like because it gives you control. Now moving over to the throttle pedal, and this is probably gonna be my biggest complaint with the car. As you're driving and you let off the throttle pedal, and and then shift gears, when you press in the clutch, sometimes you'll even notice the RPMs accelerate. So the throttle pedal really floats, uh, you've got some rev hang, so when you do upshift, you know, you've got to wait a little bit uh, for that RPM to drop, and it kind of makes it not very smooth when you're shifting gears, because if you shift fast, then you're going to kind of have the engine do some braking on you, because that engine's at a higher RPM than the transmission and when you engage that clutch and they're really off you know you kind of get that jerky motion so it's not necessarily the smoothest manual transmission to drive uh, and it's because that throttle floats up so you have to take time with your gear shifts and if you do it quick it's just not going to be that smooth now that said I do like the position of the pedals down there it does seem fairly easy to put your right foot on the brake and then kind of blip the throttle a little bit if you do want to rev match your downshifts down into second, coming in this corner and accelerating out. Very fast car. 
strong brakes. You know, the brake pedal feel is definitely not as aggressive as it could be. I think on my STI it's a little more aggressive, and there's definitely models I've driven which have more aggressive brakes, but it does have good feedback, uh, and it does have a good increasing resistance as you press along it. Now, moving on to the steering, I actually really like the steering in this car. I think it's pretty precise, pretty sharp. Uh, you know, it has a good amount of effort required, but resistance increases at a pretty good rate as you turn in harder or accelerate more in the corner. So a good feel for the steering. Now, as far as turbo lag, it's not too big of an issue, especially when you're at the higher RPM. And remember, you do get peak torque at 2000 RPM, which is quite a bit lower than the previous model, WRX, which was a much higher RPM, so you don't have quite as much problem getting the power down. Okay, let's get a nice highway pull in here. So driving on the highway, we're doing about 65. There is a decent amount of noise from the tires that you can hear. We're looking at about 79, 80 decibels. So I've completed my fuel economy test course. It's about 53 miles, primarily highway with some city and some hills mixed in. This car is rated 21 in the city, 28 on the highway. And as you can see, I achieved 35.1 miles per gallon on my 53 mile course. So significantly better than the highway rating. And the fact that this car, you know, it's all wheel drive, it hits zero to 60 in around five seconds. The fact that it can achieve 35.1 miles per gallon is incredible, so well done. So how does it corner? Actually, everything about the driving experience is pretty good, minus that rev hang where you have the throttle just kind of floating and you're waiting for it to drop down. Other than that, not too much body roll, it seems pretty planted, and when you accelerate out of the corners, it does a good job of holding and sending the torque where it needs to go and pulling you out of it. It's a really fun car to drive. Now, let me take a moment real quick to just convince you why, for no reason, should you go with the automatic option. The manual's the way to go, and there's a lot of reasons for that. First, it's way more fun. Second, it's $1,200 less. Third, it's rated three miles per gallon better, uh, combined rating. And fourth, it's 166 pounds lighter. So with less weight, everything is improved. Acceleration, fuel economy, braking, handling. So it just makes so much sense in every way it's better and it's cheaper to go with the manual option. So that's exactly what I would recommend. But overall, you've got a car that can accelerate to 60 miles an hour in about five seconds. And on top of that, it can achieve 35 miles per gallon as it did on my fuel economy test course. And for that, it's just, it does it all. That's pretty awesome. All wheel drive. Uh, so you can take it anywhere. Phenomenal vehicle. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.